Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgive them, they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgive them, they know not what they do.
Hebrews 9, 11 through 14. When Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made. That is to say, not a part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place, once for all, by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the eternal spirit that Christ offered himself unblemished to God cleanse our consciousness from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God? On a hill far away stood in no cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of loss Till my trophies at last. 
will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. And I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. be like to be hanging there on the cross, excruciating pain, struggling for each breath. And the crowds are there around you, and they are hurling their insults, but they're not hurling them at you. They're hurling at the guy in the middle. You expected something out of this day. You expected the crowds to be upset at the crimes that you had committed. But they don't seem to care about the crimes you had committed. Instead, they're, they're making fun of the guy in the middle because he claims to be God. And he's responding by forgiving them. You'd play this over and over in your head anticipating what this day would be like, but this is not what you thought this day would be like. And the criminal on the other side, he's getting in on the action as well. He yells out, aren't you the Christ? Well, save yourself and save us with you. Aren't, aren't you the, the Christ? Is it, is it possible? C could it could it really be? I mean, you're here for a crime you committed. You deserve what's going on this day. But he he doesn't seem he doesn't seem to deserve what's going on today. He doesn't seem like a normal criminal. This isn't who you would expect next to you, is it? Is it possible? That he is the Messiah? So you decide to speak up for yourself. First you address the criminal on the other end. Don't you fear God? I mean, we're here for crimes that we've committed. We are on the same page. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then, then you address the Messiah, and you ask him, remember me. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And then you hear those words back to you. Today, you'll be with me in paradise. If it ever possible to feel relief while hanging on a cross, you did at those words from the mouth of God. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains lose all Blood 
it be like to be the centurion at the foot of the cross? You were there and you saw them nail the nails into his hands and his feet. You saw the grimace on his face. But he didn't try to move his hand. Actually, they didn't even have to hold his hand down. He, he didn't resist. He didn't fight back. He just sat there, and he took the pain. And they were hoisting him up, and he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And, well, crucifixions are long, drawn-out events. It takes a while for this to happen, and so you, you've learned how to pass the time. One of the ways you decide to gamble over the criminal's clothes, it's a way to get some extra wardrobe, and it's a little more fun than watching people die, isn't it? Try to find some ways to divert your attention however you can. But those words, they haunt you. Forgive them. Forgive them. You haven't heard those words on Golgotha before. Not from somebody being executed, at least. Maybe forgive me, have mercy on me. But forgive them? Why would he say forgive? And then you're 
pulled out of your thoughts as he cries out in a loud voice again. Uh, This time it's in a different language, a language you don't know. It's familiar, but... And then he breathes out again, and there's this sigh. It's a sigh of completion. Relief. Abandonment. All kind of rolled into one. This isn't how it usually goes. He's not a normal man. Not a normal criminal for sure, but not a normal man either. Begin to think about what the crowd was yelling at him. He saved others. Let him save himself. He's the king of Israel. Come down from the cross and we'll believe in you. (laughs) You believe in God. Let God rescue you now if he wants you. He said he was the son of God. He said he was the son of God. The way he acted, the things he said, the way he died. There's no other explanation for it. And before you knew it, the words come out of your mouth and you say, surely this man must have been the son of God. Your blood speaks a better word than all the empty claims I've heard upon this earth. Speaks righteousness for me, stands in my defense. Jesus, it's your blood.
on the night before Jesus was crucified, he ate a meal with his disciples. And in that meal, he took the bread and he took the cup. And he reminded his disciples what he had told them before, that he was going to die for them. And this bread and this cup was a picture of him giving his body and his blood for them. So tonight on the other side of his crucifixion, we look back and we remember what Jesus has done for us. How Jesus died on the cross for our sins. How he gave his body and his blood so that we could have a relationship with God. He was the Christ. He was the Messiah. He was the anointed one who came to save. It's not the way we would expect an enthronement up on a cross. But because of his actions on that cross, he is king of our lives. He does deserve for us to follow him, to live for him, to worship him. And because of what he did on that cross, he lived out his name, didn't he? Jesus, Yahweh saves, for he came to save his people from their sins. So tonight, as we prepare to take the Lord's Supper, I want you to think about what Jesus has done for us. How Jesus gave his body and his blood so that we could know him. So this is a meal for those of us who believe in Jesus. It's a meal to remind us of what we believe. If you don't believe in Jesus yet, We ask you to not participate in this one part of the service. I'd love to talk to you more about who Jesus is and what he has done for you. But as Matt sings this next song, I want you to think about what Jesus has done. Prepare your heart for the Lord's Supper. If you didn't pick up uh, a cup on the way in, if you raise your hand, our deacons will be glad to bring you one uh, during this next song. And only a moment truth was seen Revealed this mystery The crown that showed no dignity He wore And the king was placed For all the world to show disgrace But only beauty flowed From this place Would you take the place of this Take the nails from his hands. Would you take the place of this man? Would you take the nails from his hands? He held the weight of impurity, the Father would not see. Reasons have finally come.
during the meal, Jesus took the bread and he blessed it. Holy Father, we thank you for your great love for us. Lord, we thank you. You loved us so much that you sent your son into the world. And that he gave his very body for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. After he blessed it, he broke the bread. He said, take and eat. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks. Heavenly Father, we thank you for we thank you for showing us all the way back in the sacrifices of the Old Testament that without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins. Lord, we also thank you for making a way, a way for our sins to be covered. Thank you. For, That Jesus shed his blood on the cross to cover our sins. Lord, may we not take that for granted. May we go and live lives that are changed by you. Thank you for your great love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Jesus said of the cup, this is the cup of the new covenant. It's my blood shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it. All of you. This is a reading from Hebrews ten, nineteen through twenty five. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. This is the new, life-giving way that Christ has opened up for us through the sacred curtain by means of his death for us. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's people, let us go right into the presence of God with true hearts fully trusting him. For our evil consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Without wavering, let us hold tightly to the hope we say we have, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Think of ways to encourage one another to outbursts of love and good deeds, and let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, But encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back again is drawing near.